Hola, buenas noches. Soy yo, tu amigo Emilio. And with the Spanish part covered, let's talk about Chile. And uh, for those of you who are wondering where the fuck is Chile, Chile is this bad boy down here. That is not Texas. And uh, of course, up here we have the, uh, the remnants. And um, really what we want to talk about here is that economists, well, some economists, I have been telling us that uh, the more Europeans you have in a country, the more development you get, which is uh, somewhat of a funny coincidence. And I have uh, found these uh, two papers here for your consideration, which shows um, that economists have been tracing uh, European origins of economic development using essentially kind of a migration matrix. So you look at every country in some year, you try to figure out where did all the ancestors come from, from this country, who went back, who stayed there, which countries did they come from? Which one of these are Europeans? You know, there's the endless debates about the Turks and whatever. But um, that being said, if you do this kind of matrix, even economists can figure out that uh, more Europeans is more development. And um, it costs uh, somewhat of a splash. And I think these findings have been nicely confirmed in, in later studies, um, even by economists. Um, but uh, there is a better way, of course, is that uh, aside from using uh, records to try to figure out where someone's ancestry is from, we could uh, just test their genetics, like 23 me style. And um, there are a lot of studies that do this, uh, not so much for the purpose of development, uh, that would be racist, uh, of course. And uh, But there are studies uh, that do it for other purposes, just, you know, for population uh, structure and, and all these things that uh, uh, population geneticists like to care about and so they publish their studies and uh, those studies you can get and so sometimes they also include uh, regions within countries say uh, what we call a subnation here uh, just because they keep changing the terms like sometimes it's nation or sometimes it's states region province blah blah, blah. they're all subnations right they're the first division below the country anyway autism aside um, in 2016 we did a study me and John Fuest uh, and the study is kind of um, on the selling it is a, essentially a book, 119 pages, where we uh, we did a meta-analysis of all these studies where we, we looked up every country in the Americas. Remember, this is the Americas. Uh, and we tried to find, uh, you know, genetic studies of this country so you could estimate what is the genetic ancestry of this country. Uh, so like, what is the proportion of European? What is the proportion of Amerindian? And what is the proportion of African? Sometimes there's a small part of Asians, but those we left out since they're too small to care about. It's mainly like, you know, in Brazil, there's like a million Japanese people or so. Uh, th those people aside, um, what we got was uh, that there are 35 nations, nations which include some quasi-independent units. And uh, of these, we were able to find data for 169 subunits. So these are the subnations, either the states, provinces, or departments or, or whatever um, and um, in all these results we aggregated and we looked at the uh, the plots and stuff um, the big picture is essentially this um, on the x-axis here we have a European admixture okay I apologize for the very bad plots in 2016 I did not know how to use ggplot properly uh, so we will redo this anyway aside from the bad plots um, on the x-axis we have European and percentage of the population and so for instance uh, HTI that's Haiti you know uh, the worst country in the Americas which is also the least European looks like oh maybe not Guana is slightly less but you get the point it's uh, mostly African um, if you do the weighted uh, weighted correlation you get uh, 0.7 and if you do it into with the IQ instead of with development uh, you get 0.77 so 0.7 and 0.8 or so uh, th these are pretty um, pretty strong results in terms of, uh, of international data um, the picture uh, is more or less the same when you add the subunits. So you can see the uh, the red dots here, these are Brazil. Uh, over here we have IQ European down here. And you can see inside Brazil, uh, the smarter uh, states indeed have more European ancestry. And that is also the case for, for the US and for Mexican uh, states and for Colombian states. And the same is also true with regards to development. And you get the correlations, which are essentially 0.8 and 0.8 across these 169 units which is which is nice uh, things work out more or less as expected uh, for those wondering I think the big blue one up here is Canada um, a year later we then added Argentina which has another you know 12 or 15 or something of these units uh, 424 it seems um, the pattern is less strong here which may just be due to our um, our data our estimates being worse but nevertheless we get correlations of 0.5 or so 
uh, which is, you know, still quite decent. And it seems that Buenos Aires has some kind of capital effect because it's both smarter and wealthier than you would expect from the amount of uh, European ancestry there. Uh, so presumably some kind of capital capital effect. And, and this kind of capital effect is actually often seen with these studies where, for instance, in America, uh, Washington, D.C. is far wealthier uh, than you'd expect based on proportion of Europeans because Washington, D.C. Is, kind of, is, is, is basically kind of a swamp. And uh, there's tons of uh, ghetto blacks. And aside from the ghetto blacks, there's some absurdly wealthy Europeans and Asians and all these lobbyist people. So the, the development level of Washington, D.C. Is, is, is super high. But uh, that's due to the elites being there. Um, and now the next one we're going to do is Chile. And that study was just published uh, here a few days ago uh, by me. And uh, it's, uh, of course, obviously about Chile. And uh, we'll go over the details. So the reason we could do this study, I could do this study, is that in 2017, so five years ago, there's this guy, uh, Justo Lorenzo Bermejo. And uh, he published this uh, study with all his, you know, infinite co-authors. And what they did is that they had a data set of 1,800 or so at, at Chileans. And they have uh, genetically tested these uh, somewhere. Um, and then um, they were actually looking for, like, gallbladder uh, stuff. Okay, I don't know why they're interested in gallbladder, but nevertheless, the important part is that they shared the data. Uh, so for each person, they computed the, uh, the European ancestry and two different uh, Amerindian ancestries and also the African one. And they shared this data file so you could download it and you can compute it by region. And more importantly, you can also compute uh, social status and uh, genetic ancestry for individuals. Uh, and here's the data they have computed. Uh, they computed ancestry in three different ways. And it really just comes down to how you want to deal with the, um, the Amerindian ancestry. And so and they were interested in two different kinds of Amerindians. Ancestry and this, these were the Aymara and the Mapuche and uh, the Mapuche are further kind of in the middle of Chile and the Aymara are in the top close to uh, whatever the countries are top Peru maybe um, and so uh, they did this in different ways but they found that the ancestry approach three was the best one where you split them uh, and this uh, has some kind of implications later as we'll see um, so as you can see that the ancestry more or less is something like 50% Amerindian 40 something percent European and, and trace amount of a and African, uh, roughly 3% African ancestry in Chile, uh, in their samples, that is. Um, if we look at the individuals and we want to predict someone's social status, we can do this by plucking these ancestry variables into the regression. Uh, as usual, we leave out European, so European is the baseline, and the other values here are then in relation to European. So what you see here is that uh, if we don't adjust for anything, not age, not gender, or where people live, we can predict not too much, but roughly 4% of ancestry using, uh, of social status that is, using ancestry. And what we can see is that if you compare a person who is 100% uh, European, the average person who is 100% European, with the average person who is 100% Aymara ancestry, so this is kind of North, South American, you see that they are roughly one standard deviation lower in um, in social status, uh, if you instead compare the uh, the average European, 100% European, with the average Mapuche Indian, uh, supposing you can find a person whose 100% ancestry is from this group, they are two standard deviations below. Um, so that's quite a large effect size. And for Africans, it's one, but uh, it's not significant here because uh, it's too few Africans. Remember, only 3% African ancestry means that this model uh, has low precision. If we add age controls and gender controls, um, the picture doesn't change too much. The values are a bit, a little bit less. So some of this uh, association was probably due to, um, say, Indians being uh, younger and younger being people uh, being uh, lower in social status. As you can see, older people have higher social status by far. So they make more money, obviously, um, and have more education. Nevertheless, controlling for age and for gender, uh, we see that uh, these ancestry effects are still there, and the, the p-values, the, the free. The free asterisks here means the p-value is less than one in a thousand. Uh, so these are obviously not a coincidence. And if we then finally add a regional control, uh, that is to say which of these regions someone lives in, then we still see that these values won't go away. As a matter of fact, this one, uh, the first one became a little bit stronger again. Uh, even the p-value for the African one becomes PO3, uh, which uh, you know is borderline, uh, well, it is significant by normal standards, but you know not very impressive. Uh, nevertheless, we see that the that genetic ancestry predicts social status in, in Chile, uh, as we know already it does in America and it does in 
uh, I think in Brazil, uh, someone sent us some data, I'll publish that one. Um, and uh, here's some discussion for those who are more interested in details. Um, uh, interesting next is the regions, as we talked about in the previous plots, you can take, you know, regions of countries and see if European works within regions. And the authors themselves, uh, they did this plot where you can see the distribution of African ancestry, European, Native American, I, my, blah, 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 and gallbladder cancer. So they are very interested in gallbladder cancer, which happens to be just around here. And if you then check the ancestry, that happens to be just where the Mapuche people are. So uh, very likely there's something uh, with Mapuche ancestry and gallbladder cancer. They got unlucky, have a bad genetic mutation at some point. And, uh, whoa, this one is very blurry. Well, and... Um, uh, anyway, African ancestry you can see is large here, but really large is, you know, not even 5% uh, large. Europeans mostly live in the middle here, that's where the capital is. And the uh, the Aymara are all in the top, and the Mapuche are kind of in the south and the middle here. And so what you can do is uh, you can do this regression, but first got to look at the sample size. You can see that the uh, they basically sampled almost no one from... Mega Yanis and like five people and Eisen has eight people and so so obviously these regions are not estimated with much precision and I, I believe these regions are down here somewhere so they were mainly interested in people in this kind of northern region uh, as you can see 40% uh, of the population lives in the capital area but in their sample it's only seven uh, in its it's 17 percent and um, 5% of people live in O'Higgins, but they only have 2% of uh, 35 people. Nevertheless, the, the point is just to emphasize that the sampling was not representative in this study because they were mostly interested in Arica, which, as I recall, is uh, is one of these up here. Um, still, we, we can look at the uh, associations. So here we just have the correlations. They're not controlled for anything. They're not even weighed. Uh, these are just the correlations as, as they are. Um, here, the social status, that is the average social status based on the indicators in our study. And so that is the individual level. We have, I think, uh, education level and income. And if you take a kind of average of this, and then you average that uh, within each region, you get this correlation um, of this social status. Uh, Simke is a, um, it's a scholastic test that all the students take. And so it's an end of schooling standardized test. And you can get the average for each uh, region or whatever they call them. And of course, uh, when you have uh, the actual averages this way, they're, they're extremely reliable. Um, HDI is a human development index as computed by some academics. Uh, so really social status and human development index should be more or less the same thing. And if we check, they do correlate 0.6 and they also correlate 0.6 or so with, um, uh, with, uh, with the cognitive scores. So that's, uh, these correlations are, are typical. Um, when we look at ancestry, there's basically nothing for European ancestry, it correlates with in a, call it with intelligence a little bit, call it with social status or a little bit, but nothing is significant. Uh, I admire it even call it very highly positively with human development index, and um, but nothing is significant. There's no stars here. The only hit, so to say, is the uh, human development index and the Mapuche ancestry. So these um, seem to be worse off uh, at the regional level. And that's, of course, also the strongest association in our individual analysis here. Okay, the African is somewhat stronger, but the p-value is shit. Um, if we add them to one regression with sample size 13, not so impressive, uh, nothing is significant, but the model actually itself uh, explains a lot. It just, it's just too noisy with only 13 units to tell these entities apart, unfortunately. Um, in our study, uh, we only had 13 regions, and that's just because um, they were, there are only 15 regions, but two of them, they merged, and so there's only data for 13. But this other study, in 2020, they had a much larger sample size of 3,300, and they didn't just look at the uh, these the first uh, units, the states or so. They looked at the next one down, which I think are called communes, and then they also computed the um, the Amerind or the Mapuche percentage here, uh, which is the one you see on the x-axis, and they have also the Human Development Index. Uh, I don't know why it's from 2003. Uh, nevertheless, when you do that, and they did that, uh, they find uh, the correlation is uh, 0.60. Oops, it's minus 68. Uh, which, uh, you know, is quite similar to the minus 75 here. The slope here says if you took a region and you removed all the Europeans from it, uh, supposing you had a region with only Europeans, and then you replaced it um, with 100% uh, Mapuche people, then the, the human development index would decline by 7.5, uh, uh, 0.75. 
And uh, for those who know about the human index, uh, the human development index, you know that 0 0.75 is an enormous range. As a matter of fact, I looked it up and this change would correspond to larger than the difference between Norway and the lowest ranked country in the world, which is, I think, Ni Niger, not Nigeria, but Niger. Um, and um, so this, this, uh, this association here with the slope, I don't think it cannot be causal. It's too large. Um, uh, so there's some kind of confound in this analysis. Nevertheless, uh, the pattern is there and uh, they have 40 units here in this analysis. In their paper, they say that you could get all this data and they link to some websites where you could supposedly get them, but they're already dead. You know, the links are, are gone. And so we can actually not get these data. Uh, unfortunately, hopefully some viewers of this video will, will, um, will request the data from these and uh, we'll get those and then we'll take a closer look. Um, going forward, um, in summary of the study, we replicate the usual individual level uh, regression results. We find, you know, when you take a bunch of people, 1800 Chileans, and you want to forecast their uh, social status, you can do this using their genetic ancestry, even when you control for, uh, for age, sex, and where people live. So it's not just that the poor people uh, happens to be Indians and they happen to live in, you know, this one region where the Indians live. Because even when you control for, for where people are living, the effect is still very large and it's uh, more or less unchanged. Um, our regional results were underpowered, uh, as we talked about, 13 units. Uh, that doesn't give a lot of power, but nevertheless, uh, we could still see the association with the Mapuche ancestry. Um, we really need just more and better data for Chile, so hopefully one of you will uh, get this data for us. Um, Secondly, um, we need to update the 2016 meta-analysis with more recent studies. So every year, tons of studies get published for random countries that say, you know, their ancestry uh, in Latin America is so-and-so uh, percentage. And what we really need is, uh, is for someone to add these new studies to our big spreadsheet. So we have a big spreadsheet where we have all the studies listed and you have all the countries and all the regions of countries when you have them. And we try to estimate, you know, uh, arrive at the best estimate for each country overall and the regions inside that country. And we need to update that with the last, you know, six years of data. Um, generally speaking, this can be done with just English because most of these studies are published uh, in English. Uh, but a lot of them, um, I would guess a third or so, are published either in Spanish or uh, for Brazil, uh, Portuguese. And that's uh, somewhat difficult for me to, uh, to read. Uh, I am learning Spanish just for fun, but um, nevertheless, it would be uh, helpful if someone would uh, volunteer to help us find these studies and compile this data. Um, and to do that, just uh, send me an email at the, my Proton mail here and um, I'll be in touch. And uh, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you soon.